Consumer inflation has fallen to a three-month low of 6.77%. According to figures released this evening, CPI clocked in below 7% for the first time in three months, led by a sharp fall in food inflation, which fell to 7.01% from 8.6% a month ago. This follows a sharp decline in wholesale prices, with WPI at its lowest level in 19 months. The wholesale price index for October fell to 8.39%, breaking an 18-month double-digit streak. What does this mean for the consumer as well as the monetary policy? To understand this, my colleague Siddharth Zarabi talked to uh, P.K. Basu of ICICI Securities. Let's listen into an excerpt. Uh, welcome, Prasenjit, uh, to the show. You had some time to digest the latest numbers. We've seen the wholesale price data come in. Uh, tell our viewers, what does this easing in the rate of retail inflation or what is called the consumer price index inflation really mean? Well, what it means is that uh, the pace at which prices are increasing has eased off. So we were seeing uh, inflation above 7% for the last three months, and, uh, and that was definitely a major cause of concern to the RBI, uh, given that the RBI has a mandate to keep inflation in the 2 to 6% range. Uh, it is still well above that at 6.77% uh, year on year in October, but uh, it is beginning to ease off. And the news is likely to get a bit better going forward, partly because the Kharif harvest is, is currently underway, uh, and that uh, is likely to have been a very strong harvest, uh, which will help to further moderate food prices. So as food prices come off and food inflation eases, uh, we should get um, slightly lower inflation going forward. In year-on-year -year terms, um, oil and energy inflation is unlikely to be particularly high in the second half of the fiscal year. That is October uh, this year to March next year. We'll see uh, base effects helping on the energy inflation front. We've already seen the impact of that uh, in the latest WPI number. Uh, WPI, of course, has a very big weight for uh, for fuel, much larger weight for fuel than CPI yes. does. And so we've seen the uh, WPI inflation rate come down to 8.39% um, after being well in double digits for uh, almost a year. So uh, those are all pieces of good news on the inflation front. Uh, the worst is behind us. Um, and we've also seen that in the U.S., uh, the worst is perhaps behind uh, the U.S. So uh, a global moderation in inflation is a good thing. Uh, Prasenjit, since you speak about the worst is behind us, uh, what about core inflation? That doesn't seem to have uh, fallen. Should we be uh, concerned about that or is it time to sort of break open the champagne when it comes to uh, to inflation? Well, uh, you know, in India, we don't look that much at core inflation. And the reason is that food and energy are, are very important parts of the consumer basket for Indians. Uh, you cannot ignore food. And so core inflation is a nice theoretical concept for us, but uh, food inflation is really important. And food inflation has been above 7% um, and, and remains. Uh, it has just come close to 7% now in the latest month. Uh, and, and really the key for us is that that needs to come down. Now, if, you, if India was like uh, the US and we were targeting core inflation, then uh, the RBI wouldn't have had to send a letter to uh, the government explaining why uh, it has been uh, it has been missing the inflation target because in terms of core inflation, uh, we were below six percent for for several months anyway. So uh, uh, it if, hasn't uh, moderated if, substantially further. Okay. But the point, yeah. But the point is that it's not you know core inflation was not as much of a problem in India uh, as it was say in the U.S. relative and to what the inflation target. And what about the reversal of the base effect as far as the number? goes at some point, we will see that happen. Uh, will that mean that we could see uh, it building up again from December, January onwards? Well, the, actually, the base effects are going to be very helpful from January onwards. Because remember, mm -hmm. it's really since January that inflation 
uh, edged above 6%. So as we go forward, uh, January, February, March and beyond, base effects are actually going to be very helpful um, okay. because uh, this year, uh, calendar year, we've had a relatively high inflation. That's one thing. The second is, as I've said, the oil effect is going to be particularly helpful. Uh, it's very unlikely that oil prices are going to uh, surge uh, too much above $90 a barrel. They are currently a little bit above $90 a barrel, but it's not going to be too much higher than that going forward, given that uh, global oil demand is coming off as, uh, as the developed economies go into recession. The artificial suppression of the retail price push uh, of petrol and diesel uh, to the Indian consumer. In the last several months, if memory serves me right, six months at least, the Indian consumer has been protected. Now, we can't, I can't uh, exactly plot what would have been the consequences, but if you have given this matter a bit of thought, uh, do you think that uh, by adding natural price changes, our inflation data improvement would not have been so? Well, I think it's very... Uh, interesting that you raise that because we've just had cop 27 uh, where uh, the world was meeting to consider uh, what uh, what to do about climate change and uh, i think uh, this government over the last eight years has been uh, has been really uh, taking the lead globally uh, in ensuring that even when oil prices come down a lot uh, the full benefits don't flow through to the consumer in india in, because India is a big net importer of oil, and being a big net importer of, of crude oil, um, India needs to move away from dependence on fossil fuels. And so what, what this government has done really quite well, I think, is that it has ensured that uh, the relative price of oil compared to renewables uh, steadily moves in favor of renewables over time. And to do that, they've kept uh, the taxes on the excise duties on, uh, on oil products relatively high. And as a consequence, uh, there was a little bit of headroom. Uh, last year, at the end of October, there was uh, uh, one cut in, uh, in the excise duty rates. And then early, uh, earlier this year, and I think in May or June, we had another cut. So uh, there have been these cuts. In addition, um, uh, the government has has imposed export duties to deter exports of petroleum products. Uh, India is a significant exporter, interestingly, uh, yes. of of, um, uh, of petroleum products. So now there are still some export duties in place to deter exports, and all of that is helping to uh, to moderate uh, domestic oil prices. That was our managing editor, Sadat Zarabi, on the latest inflation figures. The Modi government is not.